Hello. We're on the M20 heading towards the Channel Tunnel and the Euro Tunnel Terminal. We're in a motorhome with two adults and one dog. We are turning off the motorway at junction 11A. We booked online, we paid by credit card and we printed out the booking form. The booking form has got the reference number and travel details such as your train departure times for going to France and of course returning. Eurotunnel have got a vehicle number plate recognition system and if you've put that on the booking form, that's your registration number of course, life should be a bit easier at check-in. But if not, it's no real problem. Even if you have given your vehicle registration number, it's better to have the booking reference number and the credit card you booked with, and preferably both, just in case there is a problem. It's about now you need to check that you have got the reference number and the credit card you booked with to hand. You have? Good. You will eventually, of course, need your passports within an easy reach, but not before check-in and more about that later. Here we are at the turn-off for the Channel Tunnel. I'm presuming that you're not in a lorry carrying freight to Europe, but you're just going on holiday by train. So you'll need to move over into the right-hand lane when you see the sign all other traffic on the overhead sign. Decide which of you, the passenger or the driver, is going to do the check-in. Either of you can do it from either side of the car, but you need to know now which one is going to do it. My beloved's usually the one who does it because she likes the hard work. You should now be moving over to the right hand lane, lane 3, the one that's indicated by all other traffic. It's about now we start getting round to sweaty palms time. There's nothing to worry about at all, but if it's your first time you must be a little bit apprehensive. There are at least half a dozen check-ins available at any time. The ones that are available have a green arrow above them. The ones with a red cross above them obviously are not available at this time. Don't try and beat another driver to an empty booth. Neither they nor you are going to get to France any quicker and all you do is get your stress levels up. Signs above the check-in booths in orange indicate which side the touch screen is located and that's where you need to aim for for whoever is going to do the check-in process. Drive slowly up to the check-in point on the touch screen. Those concrete surrounds are not very forgiving and don't forget your wing mirrors on motorhome stick out quite a lot and perhaps need to be pulled back and out of harm's way. You need to be going very slowly now so make sure that you don't hit anything for a start and secondly to park exactly opposite the touch screen. Because we put our vehicle registration number on the booking form the details were on the screen as soon as we pulled alongside. All we had to do was confirm our details were correct and then select which train we wished to go on. We picked the earlier one we certainly don't like hanging around in the Euro Tunnel Terminal. This driver had not put his vehicle registration number on the booking form and now had to make a choice between putting the reference number in or his credit card. First of all, press the touch screen to commence check-in. This driver decided to use the reference number rather than a credit card. When the full reference number is there, press Confirm. If the details on the screen are correct, then press Confirm again. He now has the choice of two trains and he selects the earlier one. Now a paper hanger will emerge from the machine and this must be displayed throughout your journey through the Euro Tunnel Complex. Don't forget to take your credit card if you use that in the machine. 
Once you've got your paper hanger and you've taken your credit card, the barrier will then go up and allow you to proceed down into the Euro Tunnel Terminal. And that little hanger they gave you, the one with the letter on it. We're supposed to hang it on the interior mirror with the letter pointing outwards so the Euro Tunnel staff can see which train you're due to go on. Unfortunately, of course, as we well know, most motorhomes don't have an interior mirror. So we just stick it on the dashboard and if any of the staff wish to see what letter we are, we just wave it about. The road to the car park is two way. It's the, I think it's the only part of the terminal that is two way. So just be careful uh, because there is quite a bit of traffic comes the opposite way. The motorhome car park is at the far end. You'll see the buses, the caravans, motorbikes, etc. They are all in there. The cars all turn off towards the right hand side before you get to the main car park that we should be going on to. On the left hand side, right at the far end of the car park, you'll find a bourne where you can get rid of your wastewater or effluence if you should need to do so. We shall be parking up, we just need to assess whether we are allowed to proceed or whether we have to wait for any length of time. The terminal. If you've been in a British motorway service station in the last few years, you'll know more or less what to expect. It's similar prices inside, there are books, magazine shops, coffee, tea, fast food outlets, money exchange and uh, travel paraphernalia that you may or may not really require. There are of course toilets inside the building and uh, in the last year or two they've moved them as far back into the building as possible just to try and encourage the occasional traveller to purchase something that uh, they didn't really want when they went in the building. When you've parked up in the car park have a look at the big electronic board. Uh, you'll find that gives you information on your travel. The instructions are given in English and French. Uh, there are four sets of instructions wait for call, please proceed, last call and departed. Our letter today is G. There's no point in proceeding until that letter is called because the Euro Tunnel staff will only stop you and there's a very good chance they will stop you for quite a long time until everyone else has got on board. If you do go inside the terminal, you'll find there are other boards inside there which give the same information as the one outside. There is a tannoy system outside, but it doesn't always work and they don't always give the instructions verbally. If I was you, I'd rely entirely on the electronic board for your instructions. You are usually informed to proceed about 30 minutes before the time of your train departure. And you have about 15 minutes to set off towards the train before they give the last call sign. Before you set off, make sure you've got your passports ready, that you've switched the gas supply off and the paper hanger is displayed so they can see the letter. The instructions, please proceed, are now at the side of the letter G and so Happy days, we're off to France.
We're now approaching the UK passport office and you will need your passport handy. Today there isn't anybody in there, but if you are instructed to slow down, do stop and hand over your passports. At the next barrier you will have to stop and this is the point where your gas supply will be checked to see whether it's on or off. Every other time we've been here we've been sent over to the bays to your left hand side numbers 1 or 2 to have the gas checked. But today for the first time ever the guy on the barrier said he'd do it himself and he did. He physically checked rather than just taking my word for it. Next we're on to the French passport office where normally you flash your passport at them and they wave you through or else they will inspect the passport and we're never sure which. This time there's no one in the office. A couple of guys are returning probably from their break but nobody checked our passports either the British or the French side. Security? What security? Now we head to the left under the sign for high vehicles. They show a sign for motorbikes, bus and caravans but no sign for motorhomes but that is the way we go. Do not go the same way as the cars. There's a height restriction barrier and trust me a motorhome will not get under it. Sometimes it can be a lonely drive through the Euro Tunnel Terminal, but it's getting us used to, hopefully, the French roads. You can start to relax a little bit more now you've gone through passport controls, you've had your gas checked, and you don't really need to get out of your vehicle until you get to France. Stop at the next vehicle check-in barrier and they'll direct you to the lane you must go into. We've been directed into lane 14 and join the back of the queue of other vehicles. Our lane of traffic appears to be moving, which is quite unusual. Normally we have to sit here for quite a few minutes until they're allowed through. Still we can't complain if we're on the move, we're on the move. Vans, motorhomes, caravans, etc. are all put on last. So don't worry if you see all the cars disappear. We just seem to be stood there waiting and waiting. That's nothing unusual. Just follow the vehicle in front. Uh, or, if you are at the front of the queue, follow the overhead green lights. We now go a grand tour of the back roads of the Euro Tunnel Terminal on our way to the train. Uh, you shouldn't get lost. It's quite simple really. It looks slightly complicated, but it really is very difficult to go the wrong way.
welcome to Mr. Jobsworthy. At this point, on quite a few occasions, we've had a Eurotunnel staff member just pull us over to a stop for no apparent reason. Why has he sent that van in front of me? No, nope. I don't know either. The last time we were at this point, there were three motorhomes in convoy and we were all ushered to the right hand side as close to the concrete as possible and part there, nose to tail, six inches apart, for about two minutes. Nothing passed us in the time we were stood there, and finally he let us go towards the ramp. Perhaps he has to show his authority and justify having a little ban for himself. I don't really know. Rant over. Loading can be painfully slow sometimes, so have a little music for a few moments. Eventually, we are going on to the train. Just leave a reasonable amount of distance between you and the vehicle in front. The entrance to the carriage is much bigger than it looks and there's plenty of room to manoeuvre. Buses get on here so there should be plenty of room for a motor home. Just leave a reasonable amount of distance between you and the vehicle in front. There's quite a lot of carriages to go through before we eventually need to park up. When you see brake lights coming on, slow down even more. Each carriage holds a certain amount of vehicles, but of course with motor homes and vans they're all different lengths, so you're only going to get a few vehicles in each carriage. As you can see the van in front is now slowing down even more and now we have to check whether our motorhome is too long or not to fit in the remaining space of the carriage in front. Air on the side of caution, don't go hell for leather into the next carriage and then find you won't fit in. We've never had to reverse out but it must be reasonably difficult and probably embarrassing as well. There has to be an allowance for the folding doors and the shutter that moves into place once each carriage is full and the guy doing the parking will wave you forward if he thinks you will fit in the carriage. You get very very near to the vehicle in front and he will tell you when and where to stop. Handbrake on, first gear, windows halfway down. Once we arrive in France safety checks are carried out on the train. No one seems to know exactly what the safety checks are but it keeps the Eurotunnel staff happy. And now we're going off 
the train. Take your vehicle out of gear and start the engine when the one in front starts moving. Keep your distance and head towards the bright light at the front of the train. Now you're in France, you need to remember to put your clocks and watches forward one hour. Remember to give a nice big wave to the guy and you're on French soil, well tarmac anyway. Up the ramp and follow the arrows. Keep to the speed limits you see and remember to drive on the right. Know your speed limits and make sure you keep within them. All speed limit signs now are in kilometres and staying within those limits is highly recommended. The limits in built up areas are no more than 50 kilometres per hour, that's about 30 miles an hour. Normal roads out of the urban areas are 90 kilometres per hour and around 55 miles per hour. Dual carriageways and non toll motorways 110 kilometres per hour, that's about 68 miles per hour and the toll motorways go up to 130 kilometers per hour around 80 miles per hour but be aware that lower speeds apply in wet weather on the spot fines can be given out by the French police and they can seriously deplete your hard-earned holiday money and fines must be paid in cash and can be as high as 260 pounds if you're caught doing 30 miles an hour over the speed limit then the police can confiscate your vehicle and only 16 miles an hour over the limit can have your license taken away. Hopefully you've not been drinking alcohol up to this point of your holiday but remember drink driving limits are stricter in France than in the UK. If you're heading for Calais, Lille or Paris then keep in the right hand lane but if you're going for Boulogne, Rhone and the west coast then you need to move over to the left hand lane very shortly. Almost all French motorways are dual carriageways, two lanes only. There are a few exceptions, there are crawler lanes occasionally on steep hills and around big cities there may be three lanes. We're moving over to the left hand lane now, we're heading down towards the 2K and the, the west coast eventually. Moving over will give you the first chance to test whether the passenger side mirror needs some adjustment or not. Hopefully not. We're well on our way now out of the Euro Tunnel Terminal and we're off to enjoy all the delights and pleasures that France has to offer. And boy, did we get a surprise when we emerged from the terminal onto the A16 motorway. A combination of rush hour traffic and roadworks about two kilometres away along the road. It took about ten minutes to get to and past the roadworks. And then we really, really were on the open roads of France. Bon voyage! <laughs> 